Welcome to another episode of Business Way Outside the Box. My name is Steve Dubin. I am the proud owner of a lightly used public relations firm in America's hometown, Plymouth, Massachusetts. And we bring to you on a regular basis people who have unusual businesses or unusual approaches to business. Today, our guest is a well-known photographer um, covering a variety of areas, mostly corporate photography, art photography, travel photography. Uh, and today's subject will be that ugly LinkedIn photo. Most people have photos that are outdated or generally ridiculous. Um, some folks have uh, LinkedIn photos that do not pass what I call the Panera bread test, which is if I meet you in a Panera bread after the pa pandemic is over, uh, will I recognize you or will I think that's your son who's meeting me? So with that being said, um, I want to bring on uh, Debbie Kramer. Debbie uh, has uh, a degree from both Syracuse University um, as a BA and also um, a degree from Le Moyne College also in Syracuse as a master's. Um, she has traveled the world taking photographs, now also resides in Plymouth's hometown, uh, or America's hometown, Plymouth, and has a studio as well as she shoots uh, on site as well. Welcome, Debbie. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Would you like a rebuttal to any part of that introduction? Uh, well, I actually have a Bachelor's of Fine Arts from Syracuse University. And uh, my major was design. Okay. And so um, starting off, one of the things that um, I know you like to say is the designer sensibility that you bring to photography. Can you talk a little bit about that and how it differs from many other photographers? Uh, sure. I think uh, my approach to what I shoot is from always a design aspect because that's what I've been along with a photographer for over 30 years. Um, I frame my shots as I would design on paper. I look through the viewfinder and I'm designing. I'm designing with color, I'm designing with pattern and form and lighting um, and framing all in one and I see things as a designer with an end use, because I've always been a commercial artist. So, and um, I think my approach is a little bit different because it cuts to the chase. Uh, for clients, for commercial art clients, uh, for business people, for product shots, I'm looking at it at the end use, um, as well as being artistic, but mostly bringing out what the customer needs, the client needs. And then I get the technical part of my photography as the back end of what I'm doing. Okay, great. Well, so, um, I, you know, I've seen your work, obviously. Um, it's very dynamic um, from a un somewhat untrained eye like mine. I just know that when I look at it, it's both beautiful and it tells me a story um, and it stands out from most of what I see. So congratulations on that work. What, what drew you to, to photography? Um, I think I've always worked with photographers as a designer, especially in the fashion industry, shooting fashion shots uh, for, for companies. And then I realized that it's design just as much as what I was doing. When I went overseas to live in Singapore with my family, I wasn't able to get a work visa. And one of the things that struck me immediately living overseas in Southeast Asia was all the beautiful colors and textures and, and buildings and festivals that are just so different and as a designer, it just screamed that I had to do something with it. 
and I immediately started shooting all of these beautiful sites and everywhere I traveled, realizing that each time I shot, I had a message to tell. I had a story to tell, especially to people back home and to other expatriates as a, as a memory of all these beautiful places and things and colors and textures and, and people. Uh, I realized that this was a golden opportunity that I'll never have again and capturing people and places that may disappear throughout the decades. One of the, my favorite things to shoot were old people, especially in Chinatown and in Bali where traditional uh, Southeast Asian wardrobes were worn. I, re I realized these people aren't gonna be around Western Civilization is going to come in and change the pattern of, of life for these people and what they wear and what they look like. And so it's almost, I got into this documentary mode of photography, which was very beautiful. And, and you're right. I told a story with, with my photos. The only part that scares me is what, what constitute old now, uh, but we'll let that one pass entirely. Well, most of these people that I didn't realize, I didn't realize how old they were. I thought, well, maybe 80s. They were actually in their 90s. Hmm. And family members would come up to me and actually tell me how old they were. And they were just stunning and beautiful and very vibrant. And they were in their 90s. Well, so uh, this, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but I'd like to pursue it while we're on the subject. That experience, that body of work led to other um, travel photography in other countries. Can you talk a little bit about that? So one of the countries I've photographed uh, quite a bit is India and Sri Lanka. Uh, mostly India. And I've gone from the middle of the country to up north. And I was able to travel and shoot uh, in all these gorgeous locations uh, with a driver. And uh, he was necessary for me to have so that I was safe and that the car was air conditioned and I had cold water to drink and and he spoke the language which was very important um, and made sure I ate at places that were clean and um, but yeah India was the next big uh, I guess photography explosion for me okay great well, uh, that's all exciting to travel the globe and to uh, see new people, new cultures, but let's bring it back at least temporarily to um, what, what local folks or business folks need to know about LinkedIn photography. One of the things that irks me about LinkedIn photography is sometimes people have their pet with them, their mother-in-law, their Corvette, um, some funny, uh, what they might consider as uh, humorous outfit. What, what are some of your bits of advice on um, your LinkedIn photo? Because really the LinkedIn has become sort of the litmus test, the, the portal where we, we go to um, get background on pretty much anyone we're going to talk to. Uh, that's a really good point. So LinkedIn has become global. And one of the things individuals need to remember is that your photo on LinkedIn is being seen worldwide. And keeping it simple and, and uh, what do I wanna say? I wanna use the word bright. But uh, in, in that sense, meaning your face, what you're wearing is nice and clean. The shot is nice and clear. 
Um, it shows who you are without any distractions or no, what we call in photography noise in the background or in the foreground. So one of the tricks is to remember that the world is looking at you and how do you want to look? Uh, it should be professional and it shouldn't be anything other than that. It, it, it's like you shouldn't be wearing your flannel shirt if you're not an a lumberjack. Right. <laughs> so uh, it's important to stay in character as to what your business is and reflect that by what you're wearing and how well groomed you are. And so that that brings another issue up to uh, to talk about is is being well groomed for your shot. So for a guy, it means unless you really want that five o'clock shadow to be your trademark, don't have it. Uh, take care of those eyebrows that are going to reach out and and pull somebody in, um, and and make sure that your clothes are ironed. So the good news is, you know, headshots are from the waist up. So, yep. During COVID, you could wear your pajama bottoms, but not on top. So, so let's talk a little bit, uh, a few specifics about we, you just held a LinkedIn ugly photo contest and, and asked people to nominate either themselves or a friend who's, whose LinkedIn photo could use some improvement, right? Yeah. Um, it's not their high school yearbook photo anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's not when they were an entry level person, um, and and it's not a selfie that they took in the back of a bus. Right. Um, and so maybe you can talk a little bit about f thinking back to the three examples of people you reshot as part of that LinkedIn photo contest. Sort of how you improved the personal brand and image of those each of those folks. Sure. Um, the first person I shot for this contest had a LinkedIn photo that was old, um, a little bit out of focus. And so that's another pointer to bring up is that you really want your LinkedIn photo to be in focus, good lighting. And the other thing was, is that again, there was an age discrepancy. So his prior LinkedIn photo was of him much younger and with brown hair. So he now has gray hair and um, his look is a lot different. Um, also the background, what he was wearing is outdated. And so he needed a fresh new photo to really show off who he is now in the best way possible. Okay. And, and um, not that I, wanna, I, I love uh, our mutual friend uh, who you shot, uh, but you also use a program that far exceeds Photoshop to, to take out life's minor blemishes and and bumps along the way right yes i do you do, uh, you talk a little bit about that yeah that's a real that's a an investment that i made uh it's a software program that is strictly geared towards portraiture and what it does is it manipulates um the overall skin tone textures um it can take out fine wrinkles, major wrinkles, uh, blemishes. For women, it helps with, oddly enough, makeup, oh. <laughs> lipstick, <laughs> eyeshadow, <laughs> um, eyebrows. Uh, and it can do some face sculpting, which three, all three can, winners of, of my headshot competition wanted. Um, I try not to alter people too much. I think that's one of the lessons I've learned over the years doing this 
is that you want to keep the integrity of how somebody looks and not overdo removing every fine line there is, but just smoothing out lines so that when you meet them at Panera, they look like who they are. Right. Okay. Um, a lot of that has to do with lighting. So in this program, I could, I could do a right side kick or a left side kick and I can control, um, give them a slight tan so they don't look so anemic, uh, especially this time of year. Um, but again, being really super careful not to overdo the retouching. Um, you really, I, I think it's easy to do and everybody loves to look at themselves 15 years younger, but that's not fair to them. And it's also not fair to the people who are gonna meeting, meet them uh, based on what their LinkedIn photo looks like. So some integrity is really important. And so might you describe it as showing their better self or the best side of themselves? I do. I, yeah. You know, oddly enough, Steve, it, it also has to do with their confidence level. All three of these individuals came to me telling me that they don't photograph well and that they never liked their photos. And, and it's true. Looking at their LinkedIn photos, they weren't smiling. Their eyes didn't twinkle. Um, there wasn't this happiness about them telling a, a, a future business partner or endeavor or somebody who's interested in using their services or hiring them that they're friendly, they're usable. And so my whole goal is to get them to look relaxed, user-friendly and get that twinkle going in their eyes. And um, it, it's such a joy for me when I see that through my lens. I know I'm hitting it. I know that they're going to shine. Well, so I heard back from all three who were really delighted with the results and immediately uploaded them to LinkedIn. Um, and I'm sure... Um, a lot of their friends and relatives said it's good to see X back and looking good. Uh, he survived whatever he was going through. Uh, so, but one of the things I noticed was in, in some of the proofs, um, they had several outfits. Do you recommend that someone, when they go to have, um, you know, a headshot, a corporate portrait done, that they bring several outfits so A, they can decide afterwards and B, the photographer can give them some guidance. Yes, actually, um, having more than one outfit is always a great idea. People always think they're going to look awesome in a particular outfit, and it may be colors that work or don't work. The camera will tell them, and I can tell immediately how they feel in those different outfits. Also, for women, uh, it's really important because different outfits will fit them in a different way. Necklines, colors. I kind of guide people, especially women, but also men, as to the colors to choose and textures and to avoid certain things in their outfits. But yes, I mean, the shoot goes relatively fast for me because I've got everything set up for them when they come to the studio. So my lighting is pretty much set. It's just a little bit of tweaking, but it allows time to make those wardrobe changes. Yes. Okay. Well, I think you've given us lots of good input there. And then there's that whole wider scope of corporate photography of other things that you might do for companies um, can you talk a little bit about how to improve and uplift a corporate image through better photography? Yes. Uh, corporate photography could be 
product. It could be the inside of a building. It could be the front desk. It could be manufacturing. Uh, a lot of product photography has gets highlighted with really good lighting, really good understanding of surface reflection and color absorption. Um, going inside of office space, a lot of what I'll be looking at is tightening in the environment. So not trying to capture everything necessarily, unless the client wants a wide angle shot of let's say the manufacturing floor and certain equipment. And then yes, you know, we'll, I'll accommodate that. Generally speaking, one of the things that works really nice in corporate shots is a combination of wide angle and then close up shots of actual pieces and parts and, and people working. Um, it's great to get those candid shots of, of people doing what they do. Okay. And so you're talking about anywhere from simple ribbon cuttings to um, setting up a schedule to get headshots of everybody with the same professional background and lighting to exteriors to interiors to product shots. There's really um, a lot of different versions of what people need help with. Right. So I've shot quite a few ribbon cutting ceremonies and I'm very particular about that in terms of lining people up, positioning. It takes an extra, I'd say 15 to 20 minutes just to line everybody up, make sure everything's there, the timing of the shots of actual ribbon cutting, um, and then the close-ups, getting the few key, the, the trick to always remembering doing corporate openings and ribbon cuttings is to get the uh, key people of that organization together in a separate shot. And again, it, it's getting close in with the lens and the background for those types of shots. Because one of the things I've noticed when you do corporate shots and you're doing people and you're doing receptions is that the key people in these organizations need to have those close-up shots that give that company, that organization, a warm and fuzzy feeling. If everything is very broad, focused, uh, it gets a little too cold. So to warm things up, I tend to like to go in with my lens and get some really nice group shots, small shots of one or two people, but definitely the key partners or the top executives of that company organization together along with people who make that organization run on a daily basis. I think that's also important from a point of interest shots is getting the folks who actually do the work together in groups of two or three, not more than that. I think the largest I like to shoot for that subject is maybe four people, but um, it gives a more human feeling to the organization, which I think nowadays people really would like to see and they can relate to better. Got it. Okay. Well, you've given us lots of useful information, more than we certainly walked into this segment knowing um, I want to ask, what's the best way to reach you um, from our audience who wants to talk to you about uh, an assignment or uh, what they need to think about for their next uh, shoot? The best way to reach me is to call me, email me. You can get all the information on my contact tab on my website at 38th Avenue Photography.com and get a hold of me that way. And I will, I always respond within 24 hours. Great. And you have a terrific LinkedIn headshot as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. Yes. 
and you can reach me on LinkedIn or okay. Facebook. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Debbie. Uh, that concludes another exciting segment of Business Way Outside the Box, sponsored by PR Works. If you know of a business that uh, is highly unusual or does business in an unusual way, please contact us at prworkzone.com. And I look forward to sifting through the many uh, suggestions I get. Again, Debbie, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Steve. It's my been a pleasure. pleasure. Okay, mine as well.